Coach Bia, podium here. We'll start with a statement and get any questions. Well, it wasn't pretty. Uh, you know, I, I could uh, kind of almost feel this one coming a little bit uh, since last Sunday to uh, put the Kansas game behind us and flip the page into uh, Central Michigan. I knew this was a team that, um, you know, just because Coach McElwain and his staff, Coach A. Key on defense, they don't back down from uh, competition environment. So I uh, knew we had a work cut out for us. Unfortunately, I think we made it a little more difficult than it needed to be. Uh, but uh, as I always say, I think these teachable moments come a lot better on the end of it victory than defeat. So I, I know we can make some things happen. Um, give a lot of credit to them. I thought our players uh, persevered, especially the second half to come out and play the way they did was, was fun to watch. Um, uh, we just got to take uh, care of, you know, some pre-snap issues, especially on offense. They were doing some things where they stand and move their front. Um, we got some new personnel groupings in there, put some guys in different position. Brandon Henderson is a guy we've been dying to get on the field. So threw him in a tight end number, uh, which was awesome to uh, get him out there on the field. Ironically, this this officiating crew was the crew that last time we were together was at Wisconsin. So uh, had that whole shared experience. It was fun to work through that. I think that's probably what started us off on the wrong foot today as it was. But um, um, I thought Luke Altmaier did some really good things, made some improvs, again, made some deep balls. Zakari continued to catch the ball. Pat Bryant, uh, you know, it was good to get Josh McCray involved. You know, the way the game had kind of played out through these first two, we hadn't been able to get him out there. Again, it's, it, you know, in, in my experience as a head coach, when you have running backs that are different, right, different pace cars, different different skill sets, to, to have Caden in there, then to pop Josh in there, and then to pop Khalil in there. Um, you know, Khalil's got that little sidestep shuffle that's really impressive to watch. Uh, uh, super excited. I thought our defense was resilient. I um, uh, gave a special shout out to Aaron Henry. Um, I know that began to break in the media. He actually uh, uh, was in my office uh, late Wednesday night. He came in the room and unfortunately lost his sister right in the middle of the week. Um, and to, to have him persevere, our defensive staff took over and uh, did a lot of things for him uh, uh, while he was kind of away from it for us a little bit. But uh, you know, to go three games into it right now and uh, to have a few uh, points that we have, you know, speaks volumes about some of the stuff we're doing. But a tremendous task this week. Obviously, uh, Nebraska plays you and I this afternoon. We'll dial into that. We'll turn the page very quickly uh, tomorrow. Today is a uh, today is a Sunday already. Uh, even though we just got done with our first game. Um, on Saturday, today, Sunday already because we're on a short week. So tomorrow will be a Monday, and Monday will be a Tuesday, and you can get it from there. So um, super excited. Um, I know the outside world thinks we're 3-0, and but we're going to try to go 1-0 every week and put our task at hand to, to get that done. So with that, open up for some uh, easy questions. Coach, a couple of talented outside receivers, Zachary Franklin and Pat Bryant, what, what are they giving the offense right now? Yeah, you know, during my time here to have uh, two perimeter players. So when you had Isaiah, you know, Casey became a really effective player, and Pat has just grown so much from a year ago. Uh, when you can have two players of high caliber on opposite sides of the field, that's a very difficult thing to, to do um, or to take care of defensively. And then if you have a good run game or a dynamic quarterback, which I think we do, to have that and two perimeter players uh, back in the time when I was in the NFL and really began to understand doubles and, and how to tip your hat to a, a go-to player, I think it's going to be hard for teams to – uh, uh, set up and, and, and defend us when those two guys have a lot of wit. So I'm um, really excited. Both of them continue to catch the ball really well. Luke's throwing it. Uh, we got to do some, we got to get cleaner uh, in the offensive line. I think we just got to challenge that group overall. They have to take a step forward um, to get to where we want to be. They got to play a lot better. What, what, is, you what is the key to getting balanced with that rushing attack? What, what do you see? Well, you know, if we played one or two running backs, I think you guys would be all like, oh, they're running back. If you just add up our rush totals, we're in good numbers. I don't really worry about, um, you know, uh, the overall productivity because overall we had those running backs together they're doing some good things you throw Luke in there but there's no doubt in my mind we got to be more efficient on early down runs um, uh, got to play ahead of the sticks we put ourselves in too many third and longs on the flip side defensively uh, when we were getting them in third and longs we were good but when they were in third and mediums and third and shorts that's when they were very effective so a lot of good learning um, but but that run game we, we say that every player in my program if you ask them what do what do good teams do? They should say, run the ball, defend the run, and, and cover kicks. And, and obviously, we got to be able to do that for four quarters. Chris, you got 10 points on the double dip today. Uh, just, you know, end of halves and beginnings halves was a big deal for you last year. It yeah. seems like this veteran group has kind of recognized that. Yeah. Um, you know, even when uh, even when they got to the score at the end of the first half, I, I looked at the clock. We were, uh, ben Miller is an incredible good job for me of working kind of analytics. and. He and I meet a lot during the course of the week. Ben's value has been unbelievable uh, for us. I give Josh and the administration a lot of credit to keep him uh, and put him in an environment where he can just help me on a daily basis. He was all over it. We talked about how to manage the clock. Uh, even last week, I called a timeout uh, on the second down play, which ended up giving us a chance to score last week. So um, I thought that was really critical. I, I did think that if we got to the 35, we would have a chance to uh, hit a field goal, and we were we were just right there at it. Um, so. 
I knew we were going to go with Chow, and I've seen Chow hit a 60, I think he hit a 64 yarder in practice or something like that with about five or 10 yards to spare. So he's got an incredibly talented leg and to get three points there and to come out and get seven on the back half of the, of the first, or the start of the second half, that was a big, big deal. So um, it ended up being a really big part of the game, actually. We talked about challenging the offensive line. What have you seen? Well, first off, they're very talented, right? Like from left tackle with, with uh, uh, JC, uh, Geske, when he's playing well, plays really well. Josh Kruitz is a, a very good football player in this league and, and, and has played a lot of good football for us. His eyes has flashed at times. And then Melvin Priestley, when he's playing for us, plays very, very well, right? Like he's got to control the moment. Um, and, and that's what I said. I said, you know, our guys, you know, we're trying to put together a game-winning drive to seal the game and move on. And they're spending more time talking to their team than they are to our team, right? And, and we can't do that, right? Those are very teachable moments. Um, uh, I can't wait to kind of have that moment with them um, and, and kind of show them and appreciate where we got to go because uh, this team is a good enough football team that one of the things that I've tried to teach and instill in them that they will go as far as they want to go, right? A lot of times the self-inflicted wounds cause you more failure than anybody. Was Ethan, has he always been the 59-yard field goal guy? Or was that Ethan? After, yeah, was that after David missed from 50? You know, uh, uh, so kind of a work in progress. When we when we saw his, high, you know, he was literally, I think, the best high school coach kicker in the country when he came out, signed with A&M. Uh, I remember when uh, uh, his name came up, uh, Dish and, and Chris Hurd both reached out to me and said, Coach, we can get this guy. This is a special opportunity. So uh, I brought him in on his official visit. He came with his dad. And uh, uh, just his experience at A&M wasn't a very – Positive one, let you add to that, right? Like he just kind of talked about what he can do to maximize the leg strength. So we did what we had to do, got him here, thankfully. And I literally, that first practice, I was like, oh, this is different, right? And, and um, in camp, he, I want to say the first three or four practices, he was perfect, never missed, hit one from 60 plus. I can't remember if it was 62, 64, whatever it was. Uh, uh, and then actually had a little soft tissue injury pop up. So that's why we kind of backed off a little bit. And David had just been hitting the ball so well. And then uh, it was fun to see David have success and with Chow today, so it's hopefully a one-two combo that will be able to pay dividends for us. Fred Seth and Gabe have probably been dominating this yeah. game for, for a long time. What does that mean for your defense when those you know, guys are doing that in the secondary? So it, you know, ironically, right, these these first three teams that we've played, I've, I've had a pretty good relationship with these coaches, um, uh, so it, it's kind of been fun for me to talk. I know if you really watch college football, you realize how much coaches talk to one another, right? So uh, when we got done with Eastern Illinois, when we got done with, with Kansas and, and uh, I know Coach McElwain, like one of the things that commonly comes up is just those two guys on the edge, 9 and 17, are, they're hard to handle. Um, they play with a lot of power, a lot of strength. Uh, we do a lot of different things with them. Um, it was fun to see Gabe have some production today and, and, and see that go forward. Uh, just just really excited um, uh, about that. What more can – One more after this. What more can your defense do when it's here out and getting the kind of pressure he is? Yeah. So it was fun. Um, I, I, I tend to watch things um, through a different lens. And so uh, Tuesday's practice, I'd made a, a cut up of everybody's individual time, which is their time with their players. And I showed the defensive line and Jamie will talk through with our entire staff because he did some very specific things. He had 100 and, I think 182 plays before practice got into our third period, right? With, with his defensive lineman where he just works a specific drill. And one of them was he was getting T-Rod to pressure through the A-gap and then break down on a, on a quarterback, right? Because He's been able to apply some pressure, but he hasn't been able to get him down. So uh, t Rod's a very dynamic player. When you can put pressure on their center, I, we probably thought going in this game that the center was our best player, their best player up front. So we really want to get after him and, and see where, where it goes. Coach, you keep talking about the 1-0 no. each week. You keep talking about the 1-0 each week. But 3-0 you know, hasn't happened here a long time. Just what's that mean to you guys overall? You know, I appreciate that, um, and I know that our guys will hear it, but I, I've literally just been hammering them. Uh, you know, I make three keys to victory every week, and our first one this year was 1-0 mentality. Um, I think it's not just rhetoric. I think our guys understand it. Even though I knew today was going to have some speed bumps, I just knew it. I mean, it's just part of being a coach. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and I knew those hiccups were going to come, but it was interesting. So we moved up our uh, – because we had a 7 a.m. Uh, we always have a, a pregame meal four hours from our first game, right? So we have a game at 6 o'clock, it was at 2 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Well, those are in the afternoon. You know, we had a pregame meal this morning at 7 a.m. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just different, right? I came over at 5 a.m. And, and, and got a little steam with Pat Bron or Pat Hamilton because that's what we do for the game. Uh, so uh, grabbed a Starbucks on the way back to the hotel. Like, it was a little bit out of it. But I keep talking to these guys about routine. Okay. Like, the more you build a routine, the better you're going to perform, right? And, and um, I thought it was interesting. Last night we moved our, our bed check up from 11 o'clock to 1030 because I wanted to have them, let them have eight hours before we woke them up, right? Trying to give them eight full hours. And a simple rule in our hotel, if you'd latch the door, 
but because you've gone to sleep, you can just latch it and the, co the coaches will come in and see if they're sleeping or in their bed and they'll go. Uh, so I believe we have over, over 50 rooms and uh, all but three rooms. Uh, uh, I think Luke was up brushing his teeth, so he's got great hygiene apparently. Um, and then there was uh, an outside linebacker room where they're both sitting in bed watching TV. There was three rooms that there, the room wasn't totally asleep at 1030 at night, right? And I know 11 o'clock uh, kickoff, man. When I was my first year at Wisco, we were 12 and one. I had 11 o'clock kickoff in all 13 of those games, and I was promising you, we were riling them to get them in the hallway uh, right at that time. These guys just have an edge. They understand their preparation. We could jump them pretty good at halftime today. I like this football team. Um, I think they're going to be very excited to prep this week and go to go to Lincoln and see exactly where we can go. Last one, Luke, was operating pretty well with that RPO. Mm -hmm. What do you like about how he orchestrated the offense? You know, Luke is, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, like one of the greatest things Luke brings to the table is he has a great understanding before the ball is snapped. He really understands coverages. Uh, I meet with those guys a couple times a week, and uh, Barry's in there sometimes, but a lot of times it's the quarterback's talking. I want to hear them talk, and, and uh, just the volume of his voice. But also Donovan Leary and Kirk, they actually give a report and they talk to Luke, right? They empower him. And, and those guys are talking about so many things that they read pre-snap. I think it's very impressive uh, to see that thing kind of play out, right? And uh, they know the strength of that room is in that room. Um, obviously, Luke's on the field, but Donovan and Kirk have been awesome to prep him. And, and uh, Art Sikowski has been a tremendous asset uh, in that room overall with Barry, which is been fun to watch. Thank you guys. Thank you.